Study the history of science and technology long enough and you will discover that, contrary to what popular culture would have you believe, few inventions are the product of a single brilliant mind. Instead, technological progress is the result of incremental discoveries and refinements made by multiple people. But nonetheless, once in a while, a person comes along whose sheer breadth of technical innovation they are involved with, while well, yes, building on others' work, is still truly breathtaking. Thomas Edison, Nikola Tesla, John von Neumann, Alan Turing, R. Buckminster Fuller, Charles Kettering, Tony Stark, and Leonardo da Vinci, to name a few. The list of great innovators extends well back into antiquity, but while perhaps the most famous ancient mechanical genius is Archimedes of Syracuse, there is another Greek innovator who is even more prolific. Here Huron of Alexandria. With a huge body of stunningly creative yet practical innovations, ranging from water pumps and fountains to automatic doors, vending machines, automated puppet theaters, and even a primitive steam engine, Heron was a mechanical powerhouse whose ideas influenced the development of ancient technology for centuries. This is the story of the forgotten Edison of ancient Greece. Despite the incredible breadth of his inventions, surprisingly little is known about the life of Heron, also known as Hero. Even the years during which he lived are debated among historians. Traditionally, he was believed to have lived either around 150 BCE or around 250 CE. However, in the early 20th century, a reference was discovered in one of his works to a solar eclipse which took place on March 13, 62 CE. Thus, today, Heron is thought to have lived from approximately 10 to 70 CE. His origins and background are also unclear, with historians debating whether he was ethnically Greek, a Hellenized Egyptian, or even a Babylonian. Indeed, as Hero, or Heron, was a very common name in ancient Greece, it's difficult to tell whether contemporary records refer to the inventor and mathematician, or another citizen of the same name. All that is known for sure is that Heron lived and worked in the Egyptian city of Alexandria and wrote many books on a variety of mathematical and scientific topics, around 15 of which have survived to the present day. Given the sheer breadth of these works, it's almost certain that Heron taught at the Museum or the Temple of the Muses, home of the legendary Library of Alexandria. Heron's known mathematical works include Definitions, a Glossary of Geometric Terms, Geometria, an Introduction to Geometry, Geodesia and Liber Geoponicus, two fragmentary works on land surveying, Metrica, a treatise on calculating the area and volumes of various shapes, Stereometrica, a two-volume treatise on three-dimensional geometry, and Mensurae, a treatise on measurement tools. In these volumes, Heron collected and systematized various geometric rules and principles from earlier sources such as Archimedes and the Babylonians, including an equation for determining the area of a triangle from the length of its sides, today known as Heron's formula. Heron's known scientific works, meanwhile, include On the Dioptra, in which he describes a sophisticated surveying instrument very similar to a modern theodolite and methods for using it to determine overland distances, and Catoptrica, a treatise on optics whose principles of light propagation and reflection would only be improved upon about a thousand years later by Arab physicist Ibn al-Haytham. But Heron is by far best remembered for his mechanical innovations, as detailed in his remaining five books, Pneumatica, Automata, Mechanica, Cherubalistra, and Velopoica, the latter two dealing with catapults and other engines of war. Many of Heron's inventions were created for use in Egyptian and Greek temples, producing seemingly miraculous special effects designed to enhance the perceived power and influence of the temple priests. One such device was a system for automatically opening and closing the temple doors when a fire was lit on a ceremonial altar. The mechanism consisted of a metal tank full of water hidden under the altar, connected to a siphon hose. This, in turn, drained into a bucket connected to a rope and pulley mechanism that operated the doors. When a fire was lit in the altar, the tank would heat up, forcing water out into the bucket, whose increased weight would slowly open the doors. And when at the end of the ceremony the fire was extinguished, the condensing and contracting steam inside the tank would create a suction that would draw the water back out of the bucket, causing the doors to close. Heron also describes a pneumatic mechanism that automatically blew a trumpet whenever the doors opened. As outlandish as this mechanism may seem, it appears to actually have been implemented in many temples around the ancient world, for in Pneumatica, Heron states that some instead of water use quicksilver, mercury, as it is heavier than water and easily disunited by fire. 
Though what exactly Heron meant by disunited is unknown, Mercury would indeed have allowed Heron's door opening mechanism to be made more compact and efficient, for it's denser and has a greater coefficient of thermal expansion than water. The element was long used in barometers and thermometers for this reason. Unfortunately, no remains of Heron's automatic door mechanism have ever been excavated, though given that later Christian and Muslim conquerors were known to have stripped ancient Egyptian and Greek temples of all available metal parts, this is hardly surprising. Another of Heron's inventions intended for temple use is a surprisingly modern one, the vending machine. Designed to dispense a small quantity of holy water for ritual ablution, this device consisted of a small water tank with a spout and flapper valve connected to a small balancing beam. When a five drachma coin was dropped through a slot in the top, it fell onto the balance beam and opened the valve, dispensing the holy water. A moment later, the coin slipped off the beam and the valve closed. The accumulated proceeds could then be collected by the priests. Heron appears to have based his design on a similar hygiene device invented by Philo of Byzantine, who lived and worked in Alexandria 300 years before. Philo's device consisted of a water tank from which protruded a small metal hand holding a ball of pumice stone, commonly used for scrubbing. When a user removed the ball, the hand retracted into the device and water began flowing from the spout. A few moments later, the hand re-emerged holding a fresh stone. Far more influential among Heron's many inventions, however, was the hydrolis, an early form of pipe organ. This consisted of a set of up to 19 vertical pipes derived from pan pipes blown by a clever hydraulic mechanism. As the operator pumped a handle, air was forced through a one-way valve into an inverted bowl-shaped chamber submerged in a tank of water. Air from the chamber was then drawn off to blow the organ pipes, the weight of the water in the tank maintaining this air at a constant pressure. In this manner, the hydraulis was able to sustain more consistent notes than a regular bellows-powered organ. The hydraulis proved extremely popular, seeing widespread use across the ancient Mediterranean world. Indeed, an inscription at Delphi describes how a musician named Antipatris covered himself in glory by playing the hydraulis for two days straight in the competition. It was reportedly Roman Emperor Nero's favorite instrument and was played at all sorts of public events in Rome, from gladiatorial games and theatrical performances to triumphal processions, wedding banquets, and swearing-in ceremonies for public officials. So widely used was the hydraulica that, unlike most of Heron's inventions, physical remains have been found, most notably in the ruins of the Roman clock Workers Guild Hall in Budapest, Hungary, which burned down in the 3rd century CE. Intriguingly, Heron later developed a windmill-powered version of the hydraulica, or his assistant, from having to pump the instrument by hand. Another of Heron's hydraulic innovations was what is now known as Heron's Fountain, which operated without the use of pumps. This consisted of a shallow tray with a spout in the middle from which a stream of water issued. The tray, in turn, was connected by a series of vertical pipes to a pair of sealed chambers. Water flowing from the tray into the first chamber compressed the air inside, which then flowed into the second chamber and forced the water inside out the spout in that tray. Despite appearances, this was not a perpetual motion machine, such devices being physically impossible, or so big energy would have us believe. Instead, the water would continue to flow until the first chamber was completely filled, whereupon the whole fountain would stop. Still, the effect must have been mystifying to ancient observers. Heron also invented a double-action water pump with a rocking handle remarkably similar to modern designs, which was widely used by the notoriously inept and corrupt Roman fire brigades, the Familia Publica. How corrupt, you might ask? Well, when the brigade's creator, general and statesman Marcus Lucinius Crassus, arrived at the site of the fire, he would not begin extinguishing it right away. Instead, he would offer to buy the burning property from the owner. If the owner refused, Crassus would hold his men back and let the building burn continually lowering his bid until the owner finally relented. In any event, Heron's genius even extended to the field of theater, for which he developed a variety of impressive special effects, including carts and set pieces that automatically moved about the stage seemingly of their own volition. These devices were powered by a falling weight system whose speed was regulated by the flow of sand out of a reservoir, similar to an hourglass. But Heron didn't stop there. Using a sophisticated system of gears, knotted ropes, and other mechanisms, he was able to make these carts stop, start, reverse, and trace circles or figure eights in a predetermined sequence. These techniques were the distant ancestors of modern computer programming, which would not be experimented with again until the 18th century. 
But even this remarkable achievement was dwarfed by what is perhaps Heron's most impressive creation, a fully automatic miniature theater that presented a complete 10-minute theatrical performance using mechanical puppets. The show, titled Naplius, told the story of a king whose son is falsely accused of treason by his comrade-in-arms, Ajax, and stoned to death. King Napolis then sets about exacting his revenge on Ajax, aided by the goddess Athena. In the first scene, mechanical figures of nymphs were shown repairing Ajax's ship, accompanied by the realistic sounds of saws and hammers. The doors of the theater then close and reopen to reveal the second scene depicting the launching of the ship. The third scene depicted Ajax's fleet sailing across the sea accompanied by leaping dolphins. The sky then turned stormy, causing the ships to draw in their sails. In the fourth scene, King Naplius was shown holding up a false beacon to draw Ajax's ships onto the rocks, with Athena looking on approvingly. Finally, the last scene showed the fleet being shipwrecked on the rocks and Ajax struggling in the water. Like all of Heron's automations, the entire show was driven by an intricate system of pulleys, gears, and falling weights. But the invention for which Heron is best remembered today for is the Iola Pile, or Wind Ball, a distant ancestor of the modern steam turbine. This comprised a closed metal vessel from which protruded two vertical pipes. Suspended between these pipes was a hollow metal ball with two L-shaped nozzles. When the vessel was filled with water and placed over a fire, the steam produced would flow up the pipes into the ball and out the nozzle, spinning the ball about its axis at high speed. Indeed, a replica constructed by classicist Dr. J.G. Landles of Reading University in England spun at an extraordinary 1500 RPM, likely making it the fastest rotating object in the world at the time of its construction. Yet while it's tantalizing to speculate that, had history played out differently, the ancient Greeks could have started the industrial revolution nearly two millennia early, in reality Heron's mechanism was little more than a toy, unsuited to any practical application. Indeed, when constructing his modern replica, Dr. Landles had difficulty finding the optimal tension between the ball and its tubular pivots. Too tight, and the ball had difficulty spinning. Too loose, and excessive steam leaked out throughout the joint. And even when optimized, it had an energy conversion efficiency of only 1%. It would not be until 1577 that Aran Tauku al-Din would find a somewhat practical application for Heron's mechanism, adapting it to turning a roasting spit over a fire. Still, as far as basic mechanical principles go, the Iolo pile was centuries ahead of its time. Beyond all this, he came up with self-trimming oil lamps, self-filling wine bowls, and even a primitive form of odometer to record the distance traveled by a cart. The list goes on and on and on. In the end, while his name today is perhaps not as readily remembered as the likes of Archimedes or Dr. Emmett Brown, when it came to technology, few in history accomplished more given the tools and scientific understanding of his era than Heron of Alexandria. Thank you.